Hi, I'm Joanna Lewis. I'm Provost Distinguished Associate Professor of Energy Environment and Director of the Science, Technology, and International Affairs Program at Georgetown University. I think that U.S. competition with China has in many ways been a, a mobilizing force for the United States policy on climate change and particularly in clean energy technology development. Um, of course, the most important uh, climate legislation that we've seen in recent history is the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act, which includes all sorts of programs to incentivize the development of clean energy technologies here in the United States. And we've already seen um, a movement uh, towards building new clean energy technology manufacturing facilities here in the United States in response to the, the, the subsidies and incentives that this legislation provides. I think in many ways, um, this legislation wouldn't have happened without um, recognition that the United States in many ways is sort of falling behind China um, in the clean energy technology manufacturing space um, with repercussions also for our positioning in clean energy technology innovation more broadly. And so I think that it, in some ways it's been useful to have um, competition with China really incentivize climate action and clean energy technology innovation support uh, here in, in the United States. China leads the world in the manufacturing and deployment of almost every clean energy technology that you could think of, uh, wind turbines, solar panels, batteries, electric vehicles, um, and the list goes on. Um, but I think that, you know, as China has developed these industries quite rapidly, there have been uh, real investments made in the scaling of these technologies, as well as in uh, clean energy innovation. Um, and I think that it remains to be seen whether China is going to sort of not just be the scaler of existing technologies or whether it has the ability to really innovate in the next generation of clean energy technologies that we're going to need for the low carbon transition. Historically, the, the technologies that China has really been able to adopt um, were initially innovated in other countries, um, primarily Europe and the United States, including um, the wind turbine and, and particularly solar photovoltaic technology. Um, China was able to have that technology transferred and then really scale up manufacturing at home. Um, and so I think the true test of China's um, national innovation system in the clean energy and climate space will be if we see new innovations coming out of China, um, particularly in the next generation uh, clean energy technology industries um, that are going to be you know, increasingly important in the coming years as um, countries all over the world scale up their deployment of low carbon technologies. Climate change remains um, a high level policy goal uh, for the Chinese leadership. Um, we still see a mention of commitment to achieving the key um, climate change goals that have been laid out um, you know, particularly under the Paris Agreement, China has a goal, a set of goals for 2030, including peaking emissions um, no later than that year, um, as well as a goal of achieving carbon neutrality by 2060. Uh, these so-called dual goals are really the cornerstone of China's climate policy. Um, and while they remain um, very important in China's overall national policy trajectory, we have seen somewhat of a reversal in um, China's uh, shift away from coal and, in fact, uh, a return to coal in uh, the last year, particularly coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic and then with the war in, um, in the Ukraine. Um, concerns about energy security have certainly permeated China's leadership, and we see new incentives to build coal plants and, and to mine coal, even if um, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily make economic sense to do so. I think a lot of this is 
just a return to kind of conventional um, tried and true technologies in a time of crisis. Um, but I think in order, of course, to, um, to be able to achieve the 2030 and especially the 2060 goal, um, this is going to require a much more concerted effort to shift away from fossil fuels and coal in particular. And um, we still see uh, many signs that, the, that China's leadership is committed uh, to this low carbon transition and to carbon neutrality goals um, sometime um, after mid-century. Happy Earth Month. Thank you, everyone.